<laughs> Which one do I look? Is that? Welcome to another episode of Black Ice Reality Check. I'm your host, Black Ice. Uh, before I start this session, again, make sure you go to the description box in this YouTube video at the bottom or the hyperlink in uh, Instagram and order HV Alpha. It helps you with your cognitive focus brain function. Make sure you order. Got a special guest today in the house, the one and only, the dating master relationship guru, Troy Francis, all the way from the other side of the pond, London. Hey, man, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Right on. And we have a guest that's running late, by the way, so we'll wait till he gets here. We're still going to go. Troy, thank you. You were here yesterday with uh, Pearl. We were on. Absolutely, man, yeah. With a group of people. Mm -hmm. Got kind of... Got ca quite, quite a little bit, little little bit, bit spicy. spicy. Points, didn't uh, why don't you go ahead? And, um, I've watched your videos, but tell the audience what you do. Like, get into what you're doing and what your main focus is. Yeah, thanks, man. Well, um, so basically, my name's Troy Francis. I'm a dating coach. I'm based in London in the UK, which is where I'm from, although I spend a lot of time traveling. And fundamentally, what I do, and I work with a few other guys, but what I do is teach guys basically how to come across better in front of women that they want to attract, okay? So it's basically dating coaching, okay? So we go around and, you know, coach guys maybe in the city where they live or in a different city. We talked about Colombia yesterday, you know, one of those places where, you know, the dating scene is quite amicable towards dudes. Right. You know, we might take them there or we might do it in their home city and we'll just take them out and, and really work with them to make sure that they upskill themselves with, like, rears, flirtation, all that stuff. So you actually go there with them? Yeah, I do. I mean, it's a bit of it's a bit of everything, really, because I do. I've got online courses as well, so I'll do like online tuition. I'll do consultation calls with guys, uh, and obviously, you know, as as a sort of marketing effort, I also create content. So I do YouTube like you, and go on these podcasts and all that kind of stuff. But the bread and butter of it really is um, working with guys. So it, it's it's a split between doing stuff online with guys, which can be can be really good. But in the end, there's something about it. It's really good to actually physically meet up with the person and just see what That's they're good. doing. That's good. Yeah. So you, you have a book out? Yeah, well, I actually, I've got a collection of books, actually, because I actually wrote quite a few. There's like 11 books, which sounds ridiculous. They're fairly short, though. Okay. But nevertheless, you know, there's like 11 books of, of different sort of kinds, basically about dating, about game, all that kind of stuff. Put it together in uh, a bundle, which is called Renegade Dating Blueprint. So I've written a whole bunch of stuff because I started out do as a blogger, really. Yeah, there's like, a book out like uh, One on One Leadership by John Maxwell. So I don't know if you know who he is, but he's a mentor mm. in leadership. But he has little books and he's got a big one, but he's got all these mm. little short. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these books are relatively short, but I mean, put together, they, they cover different aspects of dating. So there's things like there's, there's, I've got one called uh, Still in the Game, which is aimed at guys who are like sort of 40 plus. For those sort of slightly older, I might need to read that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, exactly. You know, none of us are getting any younger, are we? So for those slightly more mature, what's gentlemen. the number? What's the challenges? If you, how long have you been doing this for? Well, I've been teaching it for about <clears throat> about a decade, but in terms of being out there and doing it, I mean, really, since my twenties, you know. So, what's <clears throat> changed in the last ten years for dating? Has it been progressively more challenging for men or easier for men? It's a funny question because I think it's in a way a bit of both, if you know what I mean. Because I think <clears throat> the stock answer is it's got harder. Because what? The stock answer, I would say, is it's, it's got harder because of Instagram, because of the dating apps. And, you know, we all know women have got all these choices. They're getting hit up with DMs all the time. They're getting, you know, likes on their pictures and all that kind of stuff. So in that sense, it's getting harder because the market is more competitive. On the other hand, you know, let's be honest, uh, the market is also more <clears throat> anything goes. These days. Really? In the sense that, you know, I think, was it you I was talking to about this or somebody else? But if you think back to sort of 10, 15 years ago, um, women may have been a bit more backwards in, in terms of, okay, we're going to need to do three <coughs> dates here and I really want to get to know you and blah, blah, blah. Right now, you know, we're in Vegas, we've got the pool party. You know, these girls aren't necessarily waiting around for three dates in order to get intimate, right? So w what I'm saying is there's a lot of opportunity out there, but is that opportunity being limited to what's perceived as the top? You know, Yeah, we, we actually driving. I <clears throat> dropped you and Pearl off. Yeah. We're not in the to, car. Not together. Not together. All together, yeah. <laughs> we, no, no, we were driving to the, the um, <clears throat> hotels after the podcast, yeah. and she had asked the question, and we kind of talked about that. How yeah. it's, is it easier now or, what? you know, what's different? And yeah. 
which was great because Pearl's, you know, with all her knowledge, she's asking us. Yeah. Which you don't see a lot of people do, right? Mm. Mm. You see a lot of women ask other women, and they don't ask men what they think. Yeah. And even if the men give them the facts and the data, the objective truth, they don't like it. Yeah. And they throw it out with the baby in the bathwater, right? So yeah. um, I find that very interesting. That's that's so. Do you have um, <clears throat> do you have a so is it a, a type of uh, class that you sign up for? How's it work if a guy wants to get enrolled? Uh, so there's a couple of things. So <clears throat> it depends really what they want to do. I mean, what I normally like to do is if guys approach for help, I sort of get them on a phone call and try and, you know, just talk to them about what their actual challenges are and then figure out what the best way forward right. for them is. I mean, at the moment, and I don't want to make it into a big sales pitch, but at the moment um, <clears throat> in uh, in August, we've got I've got a class with a colleague of mine called James Tusk. We're doing this course called The Edge, which is an online course. And there's also a boot camp if people want to do that as well. And that is really teaching guys how to, well, as it says, how to have edge when they're going into right, these interactions. Because, right. you know, part the first problem that guys have is <clears throat> they're not approaching. They're not doing anything. And this, But the second problem is that if they are approaching, they tend to approach and kind of interact with these women in a quite a nice guy sort of fashion. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to tell you the story. Okay. I got a different approach. Yeah? That works for me. Okay. So I was in the casino. I played a lot of cash games poker. Yeah. And this gal came up. Now, she's granted she's a working girl, okay? Mm. They're full of working girls to a point. Yeah, of course, yeah. And I saw her coming, and I said, I'm going to kind of mess with her a little bit in mm. a good way. She came up and said, hey, how you doing? I said, good, good. She goes, what are you doing tonight? I said, I'm taking a break from poker. She's like, would you like some company? I said, no, nah, not really. She's like, you don't want to have fun? I go, no. I already got two girlfriends. No, I don't. I just said that. Yeah. I got told you the story in the car. Mm, mm. She's like, what do you mean? Oh, you, you got two girlfriends. Oh, you like that? You're one of those players? I said, no, they both know about each other. Now, when I was dating, when I was single, I would date multiple girls and tell them yeah. because I had a, I don't give a fuck attitude. Yeah. And when I didn't care, I was more attractive Yeah. from the woman's perspective, which is ironic. Yeah. And- we know now why it's that way. Yeah. Well, when we were going through the game, we're like, what, what, what? I don't understand. I'm such a nice guy. Yeah. Women yeah. inherently don't want nice guys. They want a guy. They want to be treated right, but they don't want a nice guy. Yeah. And so what I did is she's like, well, so, you know, she kept hanging around. Like like uh, that movie Rounders, mm. hanging around, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. KGB was talking about um, with Matt Damon. So she kept talking and talking and talking. And I was literally trying to shut her down. She says, so you don't have fun? I said, I just told you. I have two girlfriends. I'm here taking a break. I can have it whenever I want, which is a fact. I have a girlfriend. But the point yeah. is, I was just playing with her. She's like, oh, wow. You know, she goes, that's interesting. And she kept engaging, not from a transaction perspective as a working girl, but interested in me as a person. Yeah, yeah. Now I caught her attention, which I was <clears throat> seeing. I knew it would work. Mm. Very attractive girl. Very attractive. And then she goes, well, so you want to buy me a drink? I said, no. She goes, why not? I said, why would I buy you a drink when I got two girlfriends? Well, just to be nice. I said, I'm not a nice guy. I'm a bad boy. She's like, no, I don't think so. And then I go, why don't you have one of these simps go buy drinks? She says, why do guys always say that? Why are you guys like that? I said, look, the fact that I, I'm not interested in you, you're very attractive. I don't, need, I don't need to have fun. I can have fun whenever I want. I got two girlfriends. She would not go away. Yeah. And then she goes, yeah. well, what if I give you my number? I said, I told you I don't need. No, maybe we can, you know, uh, hang out. She actually was looking at me as a, 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 a for a relationship right. or a mate. Yeah. So prior to that, and I'm getting to my point, men don't approach women. Yeah. I find sometimes quite the opposite that if I go into a, a, a lounge or a restaurant or somewhere, prettiest girl in there. I mm. said this to guys, watch. I'll look at her and then turn my head like she's not shit. Yeah. Now she's intrigued. And then I find the woman kind of orbiting around me, trying to get my attention. Yeah. And she'll walk by, look, and just kind of laugh out loud. And it, she's like, did he just laugh at me? Mm. They're so bothered by the fact that I'm not enamored by their looks that now they're interested in me. Yeah. It's a weird effect. <clears throat> yeah. And yeah. it's and it <clears throat> honestly, it's sad that it has to be that way because mm. I think in the 1950s, I don't think it was that way. Mm. Can you talk about that dynamic? What do you see? Yeah, I think, no, it's a really interesting, it's a really interesting story. And I mean, like you said, I think we know why that works because it's that push-pull thing, isn't it? And, you know, you you seem to be slightly unavailable or somewhat, well, totally unavailable. And so she's like, shit, I gotta get, I gotta get hold of this guy. I gotta pull this guy right. in. So it works really well. And I, I do agree with you. Um, I think as a, as a strategy, I mean, I, I get the point about 
yeah, you can go into the bar, you see the cute girl, you kind of look at her and then you look away and then, you know, she kind of orbits around you. So that that, that can work. I, I think um, I think what, what a lot of guys have an issue with, though, is that um, they, they don't really have the skill set to, even if she does come over and even if she does present herself, they maybe don't quite have the skill set to really play that in the right way anyway, which is why we encourage guys to approach as a sort of a, Almost like training wheels, if that makes sense. No, I understand. You know? and, and, and equally, when we get them to approach, we're getting them to approach in a way that is not simpy. Because that's the key thing, isn't it? Yeah, there's, because there's different ways of... It's like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. Hey, baby. You I know, think it's that. like an oxy, oxytocin high. Yeah. Because they're like, I can't believe I'm talking to her. And then they try to sell, oversell themselves. Exactly, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then the girl mm -hmm. loses interest. And Pearl was even talking about that, how... This guy saw her on my podcast mm. and was approaching her. I guess she went on a date with the guy. Yeah. Right? She's talking about that. Yeah, yeah. And then he was super nice. And he fit all the boxes. And then he's like, I want to marry you. And it totally <laughs> turned her off. Yeah. Yeah. It totally turned her off. Instinctively, biologically, she knew that this isn't the right guy because the guy with all the resources <clears throat> isn't going to necessarily do that right away. Exactly, and it's it's a low value thing. To, I mean, no offense to that guy; I'm sure he's a great guy, but it's it's kind of comes across as a low value thing to do because the woman's going to be thinking, well, if he's willing to just you know throw all everything on the table immediately, what does that say about him? Has this dude not got other options? Is he not you know? Because actually, Facts. I think with personally with long term relationships, it should be the other way around. It should be the woman trying to lock you down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we were talking to. Uh, Talking to a mutual friend of ours um, about this. Hello, sir. Thor is in that. the house. Thor's in the house. Late, you know, Las Vegas traffic. Yeah, no, yeah. Las Vegas traffic people, it's never the same. Yeah. But I was talking to a mutual friend of ours about this, actually, and he was talking about his wife, and he was saying how she was trying to persuade him for ages and ages for those guys, you know, for them to get together, for them to get into a, into a, into a marriage. And he was almost making it difficult for her. He was almost giving her... Like, right, well, if you want to do that, you've got to sell your house and you've got to come and move over here in my apartment and all this kind of thing, you know, and actually make you jump, almost jump through hoops in order to get that ring. So I think guys have got to be very, very careful about the first pretty girl who kind of smiles in their direction. Go, oh, fuck you. I'm going to throw everything at this, you know? Yeah. You've got to be, you've got to show that you. 100%. Yeah, exactly. Now you guys know each other. We do. Yes, we, we do. do. Good to see you again. Sir. Yeah, pull those mics closer too, guys, if you can. Yeah, yeah so, I absolutely do that. So, mm. fo no, just this way. Do this. Oh, okay. There you go, and then yeah. push push it up. So, uh, this is uh, Thor. So, he wrote a book called A Dominant Masculine Presence. I'm going to show the book uh, here. Yeah. You got the mic working? This is yeah, the book. I don't want to hit his. That's it, man. That's the book, right? Yeah. It's a great cover. And I met Thor. Who, through, who is it? Who designed the cover? That's well, not him. That's not that's, that's AI. That's got to be AI, right? <laughs> no, it's not. Actually, Rolo was designing the cover, and we went back and forth quite a bit. And he goes, well, what's wrong with the one you designed? I said, well, I don't really particularly like it because it was just a placeholder that I put together. And he goes, okay. no. And Rolo goes, no, use it. I, think I said, really are good. you serious? And he goes, Rolo no, hasn't done anything for me. He doesn't it. design use nothing it. for me. He goes, no. Rolo, I, where's the love? Yeah, he was like, <laughs> Thor, just use it. It's, I read the book. It's just... It fits. Just do it. Now, you wrote the whole book yourself. Do you have a co-author? Anybody help no, you? No, not at all. I, I did hire a critic and, and, a, and a professional editor, but I, hired, I did it backwards. I had the editor first, and then I hired the critic right as I was going to publish. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, but you do need to do that right? Be, yeah. because you'll get lost in it yeah. yourself, and you can't see things. So uh, I know what I'm talking about. I know my audience knows what I'm talking about, but I want to reach a broader audience. Yeah. So that's what I did. That's interesting. Yeah. It's, it's like somebody's talking about my supplement brand I, I launch, right? Yeah. So I have these workout supplements and all the bodies, but I was like, oh, it needs this. And I said, look, you guys are a half of a percent of market and I don't want crappy products. I want mid-range to good products. But if I target just bodybuilders only, yeah. I'm not going to make any money. I'm not just doing it for money, but it's good products. I gave you yeah. a sample. Yeah. But, uh, no, it's interesting you said that, Thor. So I had the, the luxury of meeting him on a live. Okay. never spoke to him great, before. Man. We did a live, and it was on yeah. uh, body positivity. Yeah, we we just talked about that yesterday. Lizzo, yeah, 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 yeah. Lizzo fired her dancers because they were too fat. That was great. So... Um, and we were just talking. Uh, I was talking with Troy about uh, the dynamics of of, of approaching women mm -hmm. and how I started. Once I figured out the game, I started figuring out the the, the reverse uh, psychology approach where 
I would like almost laugh or not show interest in the prettiest girl in the place. And then she was frustrated as to why I wasn't enamored with her. Yeah. And he said the problem with these guys is that when they meet, an average dude meets a pretty girl and they're actually engaged in a conversation, he starts simping. Can you talk about that a little bit? A little bit about simping? Well, not that you're simping. We all simp. <laughs> hey, first of all, just I just, just did a, I just did a pre recording. We all simping. we all simped at one time until we figured out the game. Absolutely. Like I was yeah. a big yeah. simp, and then I was like, "What am I doing? Yeah. I'm a nice guy." Yeah. 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 So go ahead, talk about that, Thor. Well, well, let's go. Let's go way back. I mean, <laughs> simping. What does it actually stand for? The pimps used it back in the '90s, right? It's a sucker idolizing mediocre poon, shall we say? That's what it stood for. Okay. And so, mm -hmm. you know, and they were talking about a particular clientele, but it really fits our space too, because guys would idolize women sure. too much, put them on a pedestal. Yeah. They'd create the one itis, so we yeah. say. And when you do that, and I think this is the biggest problem with men today, is that they start off with a scarcity mindset, and then they will convince themselves and put blinders on around everybody and convince themselves the world is absolutely different because what they're doing is protecting themselves for, for their future supply or imagined <clears throat> supply of mm. the poon. Mm. <laughs> you know, they will right. do anything to protect that supply coming in. So yeah. it, it's it's uh, it's quite a phenomenon. I used to train NPC bikini competitors. Oh, you did? My I girl did. competes in wellness. She's a it's national two-time overall champion. And a lot of these gals would be in their mid-30s and they would be dating. And, you know, they would get guys that are good looking. They'd be into fitness and they would be detested by them because here it is, first or second date, flowers would show up, marriage yeah. proposals, wow. all kinds of stuff like that. And that is not what they wanted. Yeah. It was crazy. You ever run into that? With your... Well, we were talking uh, to Pearl. We were talking about Pearl, and we, we were talking to Pearl yesterday, and she was telling us this story about how a dude <coughs> on the first date <coughs> proposed marriage to her. And it, the, the ironic thing was, the reason he did that was because I think she had said on a show or something, you know. She's on my that, podcast, that, like. She, she, she'd said something like, oh, you know, I like guys to be up front and cut to the chase and all that. So he thought he was doing the right thing. But even with her, and she may be more of a marriage-minded person, let's say, but yeah. even for her, it was a turnoff because it was like, this is, this is just ridiculous. This is too fast. Yeah, so yeah. it's crazy that guys are out there doing this stuff, but they really are. They really are. And and I had experienced this over several years with quite a few of my clients. And, mm. and it's funny, when you're doing some of that training, you end up being uh, somewhat of a, a therapist listening to all the well, stuff Well, yeah, on. we can go yeah. into that, too. They, they want to. You know, they well, yeah, they're low them. body fat. They have no carbs. They're on PEDs. And, and one out of – it's like it, – I'd say this. I say this with a grain of salt, right? No. Yeah. It's like my buddy got a McLaren, and I, I said, look, I said, hope I don't offend anybody. Anybody that buys a British car, one of four is going to be problematic. Yeah. And, 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 and he goes, I go, but the opposite is with the girls that compete, right? Four out of five of them are going to be problematic cause they, because all the stuff they're doing in their body, they're low body fat for too long, no carbs, their hormones are out of whack, they're on PEDs, they're competing, and they just end up getting... <clears throat> crazy for the lack of a better term yeah i've been there and so my buddies it was coaching like you as well he's like i would never date a competitor woman no. No. and then so their version that's their version of a roid rage versus the guys <laughs> on too much trend <clears throat> having a trend moment i yeah. call are you having a trend moment dear <laughs> trend so anyways well. I've been accused of a lot of that stuff, but I, I, and, I, I'm just hormone replacement. And can I say that I, I don't want to expose your personal life, but yeah. you've been married for a long time, correct? Yeah, coming up on 31 years. Here so, so I get this is what I get. Yeah, I see these comments, and I don't, I don't read them. Glenn, Glenn Lawrence, put this all together. Let's give a props out to Glenn Lawrence. He yeah. is, Glenn is the he's my master at arms. Right, right. <laughs> he he's the DJ Khalid of management. Okay, another yeah, one. Yeah, he yeah, did yeah. another one. But here's what I want to say. Um, the, the, the funny thing is, I don't know where I was going with this. Um, oh, women always come in the comment section and say, oh, look at this guy. He, he's probably a simp himself. He can't get a girl married for, for over 30 years. Yeah. I've been with the same girl for four years. Now he's in a situation where he's dating and by choice, he could yeah. be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. None of us are simping. So the point is when you, when these women see, see us and all these guys don't know what they're talking about. This guy's a professional. At what he does. Yeah. 
Yeah. He's the he's the Liam Neeson. He has a set he of is. skills. <laughs> I a will unique. find you, right? <laughs> a unique <laughs> and, and varied set of skills. This guy wrote a book, right? <laughs> if anybody's the weakest of the three, it's me. I haven't wrote a book. I, I mean, I've, I've been you around. you got the skills, man. I've been around 53 yeah. years going on 54. But the point is, is yeah. that we, we have experience and wisdom, right? Yeah. Like, uh, this is what I tell. The, the, my girlfriend, she goes, you think you're always, I said, I'm, I'm not always right, but I'm rarely in doubt. There you go. And I'm not sleeping on the couch. <laughs> you yeah. hear me? Yeah. So I'm sorry, I didn't want to detach from that, but it's it's amazing at the comments we see. I don't read the comments oh, yeah. anymore. I just like, whatever. Yeah. Because then you get in this whole debate with them and then they take your post down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they do. It, it, social media is an interesting thing. I guess I'm an in, a creator now and an influencer, but... You know, it's been a, quite a bit of my social life for the last few years is actually doing this, you know, yeah, uh, for very good reasons, mm. you know. Um, but, um, it, yeah, you can sure get wrapped up in those comments. And they're, they're really meaningless because they don't know a thing about well, you, but they project onto you. But I will say this. The older you get, the less you give a shit. I don't give a shit, yeah. I was like, whatever. Yeah. But, but it's funny because I'll have – I had a – I won't say her name, but I had a, a female podcaster on here. Mm-hmm. And we went through, she's single, and we started talking about this. And we started, it was like a, a ther- unwanted therapy session, but she was talking and talking. It was friendly and we're laughing. Well, then the videos went up. Yeah. <clears throat> and she literally exposed herself. And everybody's commenting. Mm. She's like, can you take it down? And by the way, I, got a, I got a profile, I got an image. And she complained, and I kind of knew her, so I'm like, you know what, fine, I'll take it down. Yeah. But it's like, you can't handle. She, I knew there was a red flag when when... That's my thumbnail. You should have told me I can edit the thumbnail. I'm like, oh my god, this woman. The point is this: if yeah. you're podcasting or you're on social media and everything has to be filtered, and you want to start a podcast with a woman, don't because you can't handle people commenting and making comments about you. Look, I'm not, I'm not freaking Chad. I don't look perfect. I have people make fun of me, my beard, this or that. Oh, He's yeah. got short man syndrome. I'm five nine. I'm average height. Whatever. I don't care. But I don't care. Yeah. yeah, I have my bag, my girl. You have your yeah. wife. You have any girl you want. Yeah. yeah, and so the point is, is that these are reliable experts in in your field. Fair to say, you're not always right, but you're rarely in doubt. Yep. You have wisdom, experience, knowledge. You both wrote books. You've mentored and coached men of all ages and, and demographics and income. <clears throat> so when when people watch this podcast, I encourage them. Look. Take it with a great assault. Take what you want from it. Be like the Catholics. Take what you want from the scripture, leave the rest. Yeah. Joke, but not yeah. joke. That's good. So oh. I always encourage people. I I, I learn from everybody. I, and initially it was like, oh, you're like Kevin Samuels. Mm. Hey, that's a compliment. You're like Rollo Tomas. Hey, that's a compliment. Like Michael Sartain. No, I'm not, I'm not a robot. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a savant. Or, you know, yeah. but I'm gonna take shit from your book and I'm gonna use it. But if anybody says, Oh, that's yours. I'm gonna say, yeah, I got it from his freaking book. I'll do you one better. You could use anything in there, even a, even use the term a dominant masculine presence when describing a vibe, and I don't care. You can use it without credit me. I am standing on the shoulders of giants, and and I didn't really put anything special. I I did put something special together, but it's not secret. Mm. I'm standing on the shoulders of giants that came before me, yeah, many decades before. I mean, what I'm going to lay out there is the problem that men face and why there's a problem with masculinity. And I'm actually going to dispel, you know, what we all believe right now with alpha, beta and yeah. delta and sigma. And I must say, no, that's actually not how people are. I'm going to show you that in that book, there is men that have dominant masculine presence that would fit beta to the T, but their success level and everything they do about them isn't I'm what a, you would think. Yeah. Now, here's what I have identified. I've identified six or seven skills of a mm. dominant masculine presence, and I define those, and they're pretty straightforward. Mm. And this is what I'm telling my readers is you get above average in any three of those skills, and you'll be ahead of 80% of the men out there. Mm. The skills are pretty simple. It's straightforward. Mm. It's physicality. It's psychology. It is presence. It is prosperity it is passion it is problem solving okay and it is power as in influence of other people yeah level up in just three of those say you leveled up in physicality psychology and prosperity what do we have a brandon carter but you yeah. see so mm. that's what i'm can push, i can i say something i'll yeah. get back to you on that it's interesting though like here here's an example like i look at jeff bezos and i, I talk about this all the time he's, this example i have an example yeah 
He, in my opinion, okay, first of all, he's not alpha, but he's successful in business because any guy that, that now he, he paid $38 billion for the mm -hmm. divorce so he could date this Latina girl. But now he married her right away. He put her on the front of his rocket ship. He's simping. And so everybody's like, well, he, he's a high value man. Now, high value man means like people, people are flocking to him. Yeah, it's easy for him to date, but he's, he's beta. He's not alpha. Mm. He's not alpha. Now he's on TRT and probably HGH, yeah. right? You, but you can say that. I'm going to say he actually has a dominant masculine presence, and he gives no fucks. And no, he he's doesn't. Out there, no, he's he doesn't. buying what he wants. He's right, buying right, that right, gal. Right. He wants her. Fine, I'm going to pay you fair, up. I'm fair statement. Next one. Fair statement. But you know, the guy can buy. Yeah, he can buy everything, but uh, avoiding taxes and well, he can do that good too. And death, right? But the point is, is that you know, the guy. You, the, you could say he's beta, and he fits some of those qualities when we define it by fair. that. But I think it's a much broader spectrum we have to look at. You're and going you down. Can actually, get you. You can raise yourself. You're going to the micro level, right? I was going more macro, like the the, the surface from what I see. But you have a detailed, yeah. in depth. Go ahead. What were you saying? Oh, no, no, it's no worry, Troy. Yeah, I mean, it's fascinating stuff. I, I hear what you're saying about Bezos, and I also, I mean, I also hear what you're saying as well. And I, th I think the pr one of the issues in the space is that all of this stuff gets very um, simplified. And it sounds like you're looking True. into the nuance of it more. Because here's the thing, right? You get these dudes on social media, it's like, yeah, man, you've got to be an alpha male. And everybody thinks you've got to be tight. It's like, yeah. yeah, if you're not tight, if, you, if, if, if you're not bald and like... I jacked. have a Bugatti. Do you have a Bugatti? <laughs> the question yeah. is, the question is, I believe... That the man asked me, why do I have a gold Bugatti? I asked him, you don't even own a Bugatti. That's how it's Tate, right? Like, yeah, you know what but, I mean? It's like, dude, the guy's on a whole new level. Yeah, but everyone so, thinks so you've got to be that. Did ask you what color is your Bugatti? Yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that, right? I, I, yeah. I just but say which, thinks, which everyone one. Thinks, everyone <laughs> thinks you've got to be that archetype. Everyone thinks that you've got to be that same kind of dude or mm -hmm, you've got to be Rich mm -hmm. Cooper or whatever. Yeah. And the reality is you don't, not even to mm -hmm. be successful mm -hmm. in dating. There are different right. archetypes of, of guys yeah. who are very successful in you dating. You said archetypes? Yeah, I got a whole Is it architect or archetype? Archetypes. I got a chapter on archetypes and identity because it's it's what he says is really really actually important it's part of yeah. who you are and what you're projecting into the world and you've seen this girls say i want a guy that i vibe with exactly that's what this dominant masculine presence is about it's not a specific like an andrew okay, Tate. okay. You, but, but, it crosses but, all boundaries but guys, if, you, if you look at it that yeah. way yeah guys have a very simplified version of what of what it they is do. and it's it's more nuanced than that having said that i also do think and i don't know if you you speak to this but there is also clearly an issue with masculinity, I yeah, think. There is. Uh, and there are guys who are very, whatever you want to, however you want to label it, but sure. on, the, on the simplified, the betaified side, just yeah. to use simplified language, there are a lot of dudes who, and, th and this is something that myself and Tusk are addressing in this course that we're doing, Now the Edge, because it seems to me, mm. like, uh, like a lot of it is, even if the guy is going out there and being social and, and talking to women and being in contact with women and, right. and dealing with women, a lot of dudes, the way that they come across is very, and it's not even just blatant simping like, oh, babe, I'm going to buy you some flowers. I'm going to buy you a computer or whatever. It's just they're being very submissive. They're not being sort of, they, they don't have that kind of thing. I about think they're them. afraid yeah. to the lose women. a girl. Exactly. That's what I was talking about earlier. I think that's a big problem with these yeah. guys is and, they convince themselves to do this for fear of losing yeah. future potential. And, Sexual access. And we, we've been talking a lot more recently between ourselves, and we're starting to do a bit of content about it now about the hormonal side of things. I, you know, I don't want to derail the conversation and start talking about Tren again, but it's a little bit like if there is this fall of testosterone in the general male populace, if some of that was leveled out, if guys were dealing with that a bit more, maybe mm -hmm. the way that they came across would have more of that forceful masculine essence to it you know what i'm saying i think you're onto something i think it's a multi-factorial issue yeah and it's varied you're right testosterone across you know the west has fallen 50 well, percent in we're 50 years plus sperm counts have fallen 45 percent we're sitting yeah, a woman's wrote a book on this called countdown a, a famous doctor it's pretty interesting we're sit to see. yeah we're sitting eight hours a day on the computers and then when we're done they're now, I say when I say we, I'm not referring to us. Yeah, yeah. But I'm on the computer a lot. Then yeah. the average yeah. guy goes and he eats something and he sits on the couch yeah. and watches Netflix. Yeah. yeah. They're not going to the gym. They're not going to the gym. Yeah. And, and so you very and this is the thing you're you're seeing this this change happen where there's no your your evolution within the species. I don't believe across evolution within the species of human males. 
there's no need for that testosterone to be that high. You're not mm. out farming. You're not out changing a car tire. You're not out working on my, my, my godfather. You know, he worked on sprint cars. Mm hmm. Nobody knows what that is. We mm -hmm. probably know what sprint cars are. Yep. But he's out there. He's like, this is a 350 motor. This is a 283. Yep. This is a big block Chevy with the orange, yeah. you know, orange spray uh, engine. So Let's port the jets, man. We're going to get it going. Right. Sure. The carburetor. <laughs> so the point is this. I had duties as a kid, go out and clean the chicken coop. A freaking rooster. Yep. I ran my ass off. That's why I was good in football. I could run fast because of the rooster. Yeah, you know, was right? rooster chasing you. And then I had, and then he goes, I'm going to give you your first horse, a Shetland pony, the meanest son of a bitch oh, in the world. They are too. The, they orange, bite? the orange one with the white tail. They bite. Guess what? I got kicked like a football, but I lived through it. Here's the thing to your, mm. to your point, Troy, men don't have to biologically have that testosterone level because it's not being used. Abs yeah. And as a result, it's true. men of, of valor, like Thor yourself, Tate's, you know, the Samuels, the Rolos come into play and go, hey guys, this is what's wrong, but yeah. you've adjusted, you've recognized that, and you've made a shift, and then they're not shifting. They're not yeah. shifting. You're telling them all the stuff to do verbally, mannerisms, but nobody's going to the gym. No, and you have to because yeah. you're not getting any physical activity. And it's, you're yeah, watching it, Pornhub. And it's worse than that. We've got atrazine. We've got uh, impacts in our drinking water from progestins that are out there from birth control. Yeah. Oh, the plastic these, these are, in here. Yeah, well, yeah. they're huge. And the worst part about it is it causes metabolic syndrome. I, I have studied this quite extensively uh, for clients and for, because of the bikini competition and all that. Uh, that people end up with metabolic syndrome. And as you know, people that are overweight store an enzyme in their fat and that fat, and it's called um, aromatase. And that aromatase converts testosterone, free testosterone into estrogens. In That's the why you body. need to take an aromatase inhibitor, right? No, no, no. I don't recommend that at all. <laughs> no, 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 I don't. I actually, I'm opposed to it. I'm opposed to actually being in shape, so you don't need that. But it is kind of a vicious right. cycle. Right. Mm. And it, it does have an, uh, kind of an effeminate effect or actually makes people grouchy and but bitchy. Yeah. You think about it. That rise in estrogen right before menses. So here you are mm, overweight. Yeah. You're sitting down. You get kind of bitchy and, yeah. and, and like that. So, But yeah, from a dating perspective, what's interesting though, because you're right, I mean, we don't now make maybe it's this is almost like a uh, evolutionary adjustment because actually that sure. that level of testosterone is not really now required and maybe over time it yeah. will continue to decline because you know now it's the likes well Zuckerberg I know he's like getting Jack now and everything and fighting and stuff but you know what I mean it's those kind of dudes who are running the world however but he's also he, doing jiu-jitsu so abso yeah, no, yeah. yeah absolutely yeah, just, just as up. an example yep. you know the, right. the guys who are good at coding and whatever you know they're the guys who, who make the money and they've got the power and shit so you know however the problem is that what do women actually find attractive? What women still find attractive is that spark. It's that Zerka Riz. It's that whatever that thing is, right? The That's vibe. what they, that vibe they still find attractive. And that vibe we we <laughs> could increasingly now think if I comes down a, to testosterone. Right. If I in part. if I had a dollar for every time, I just need to feel their energy. I'd be a millionaire. If but I, it's true, I, it's you know. But it, it's true though, isn't it? It's <laughs> right. true. Because like we, this is the thing, right? We coach dudes, you know, people think it's all about they money. Mean it People think it's all about looks or whatever. We coach dudes who, who've got money. We I've coached mm -hmm. a dude who's sitting on 25 million. You know, like, you know, like it's not about money. It's not even about looks necessarily. Yeah. It's about, and again, sounding woo-woo, it's about that vibe in the moment when you're there in front of the girl. What are you communicating? Yeah. Right? And a lot yeah. of dudes are fucking not communicating anything. Or they're just like, oh, yeah, hey, yeah. nice purse. You know, do you know what I mean? There's yeah. nothing... There's yeah. nothing there. It's very safe to isolate yourself, too. And I think that's mm. what a lot of guys do is they isolate themselves and hold out that fantasy. And that's why yeah. OnlyFans is so popular. Heck, not only OnlyFans. You guys notice the rise of the red pill female coaches out there? <laughs> they're yeah, they're yeah, yeah. taking your sound bites, Troy, and then they're mixing well, it with some woo-woo and saying, oh, be emotionally available. And they look like the girl next door. And the guy's like, wow, I'll listen to her dating advice because, my God, I really hope I could get her someday. The new grift, right? Or maybe it's not a grift. I mean, they're selling a hope on something. But I do notice the rise of that sort of thing for these guys that are like you, your example. They're just not quite there. and They're a little bit effeminate. You know, they're struggling yeah. with their own shadow in some respects, right? Yeah. 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 How do you break a guy through that when you're doing it's, your boot camps? I'll be totally honest. It's it's not easy because, and I was having a conversation with somebody in Miami about this. It's it's sort of like it's the hardest thing to do because you could teach a guy lines. If you think about game initially back in 2005, basically it was like right, learn these lines. Yeah. Here's some things to say. Learn these techniques. This is this is what you do. This is how you escalate, isolate the girl, and all that kind of stuff. And all that all that stuff has value. 
It's amazing. You know, yeah, it works. You, how do you content. actualize on it, though, There's right? There's great content out there. But th for me, the problem is, how is the guy doing it? So I'll coach guys sometimes. You know, I was coaching a lot of dudes in Warsaw, Poland over the last, you know, like few months, you know, year or so. And they've obviously watched a lot of videos. They've obviously read a lot about this stuff. So they know the kind of thing they're meant to be doing. They'll go in front of the girl. So, hey, listen, I just saw you. You look really nice. I wanted to say hello. But the way that they're coming across is fundamentally not simply it's fundamentally they're coming across in a weak way there's not yeah. much dominant power there you yeah, know what i'm saying it, 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 that's, and that's the thing offering deference so to speak or, yeah a, li a little yeah. bit yeah or it's they're a, doing it in a very nice guy way it's yeah it's interesting because i what i did and again this is i had no book right yeah i was trying to trial by fire so yeah. i wouldn't i wouldn't ask i'd tell exactly i would exactly. go up to the girl and wherever i was meeting her say hey uh I, you know, I just say, look, hey, give me your number. Let's, we're going to grab coffee next week. Yeah. I'm around. I saw you looking at me or whatever. I kind of lead them because they want to be led. Exactly. Inherently, they want to be led, even though they say, no, I don't want to be led. I'm an independent woman. No, we're going to go to coffee. I don't say, hey, do you think I can get your number? No. And if, you know, you, you, yeah. it, it's got to be the right setup, right? And I think mm. the setup's like, I don't golf, but examples, if you put a, the golf ball on the tee at the wrong area, level, and you go to hit the driver, it, it, de it depends on how high the ball's going to go, vertical. It might go up, slice, draw, whatever. And if the setup's right, you see her look up, times, smile, I'm going to go in for the kill. And when I go in for the kill, I'm not going to go in lightly. I'm not going to yeah. go in like a butterfly. I'm going to come in like an F-16. That mm. thing's coming in. You're going to hear the sound bite, right? The 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 shock wave, and it's like boom, one, two, three. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Instead mm. of hey, um, I noticed you were looking at me. Um, do you think I could get your dude? You're gone. You're already gone. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And the other thing that girls will complain about is um, when dudes. You know, they're, they're trying to arrange the date, and the dude is like, so where where, do you, where would you like to go on Tuesday? And the girl's saying, no, I want him to tell me. It's like, I know this great place, cocktails, meet me there at eight, wear something cute. It's funny you said that, because then when you're in the relationship, and you go, hey, we're going to go here. Um, I really don't like that place. Hold on, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's like that joke from the notebook. <laughs> what do you want? And the, the meme is like, where do you want to eat? Um, what do you want, right? Because yeah. you can't, you can't please that. him. Yeah. I, it's a joke. I know, but but, but it's, it's very not real. It's very well, real. The way the way I find with that specifically is, I'll I'll go in strong anyway, regardless of if she's gonna like it or not. I'll say, hey, I know this great place. It's fucking awesome. Wear a cute dress. I'll meet you at eight. Now it might be she says, oh, that's too far from where I live, or I prefer this other thing, and that's okay. You could be open to negotiation, but in the first instance, you want to be the one who's saying, no, this is what we're gonna do. You know, and you're right because it's that kind of thing. Oh, wait, I saw. I'd, I'd love it if I could get your number. Or, or I heard I had a guy the other day, and he was sort of saying to the girl like, um, "Oh, can, you know, um, I, please can I get your number?" And it's like, no, dude, you've got to be fucking, you know, assumptive about this because if you're if you are that archetypal high value man, mm -hmm. you're you're just going to expect that she's going to want to give you the number. You know, we gave you know him, what I mean. Right. We gave him a nickname. Correct. He's, he's Daniel Craig. Well, <laughs> cut price, <laughs> cut price, Daniel Craig. <laughs> Walmart special. Well, yeah, if, yeah. if you're the bargain basement Daniel Craig, then I'm the bargain basement uh, Chris Hemsworth, right? Uh, <laughs> oh, there you go. No, the other, the other trend I've seen here in the states, and I'm hearing this from men, is women don't want to be picked up anymore. They want to meet you there. Oh no, they want to be picked up. They say that, but all these guys have been no, running. No, no, actually, into physically, I'll show you, and you bench press them right over your head <laughs> like this, and then you let them down, and they line up to do it. There you go. <laughs> but, but but they're asking these girls out on dates. Oh, oh, oh dates. I meant really. Oh no, no, no. I'm talking about like, hey, I'll, I'll pick you up at eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I'll meet you there. Mm. Have you seen that a lot, or is that just a U.S. thing? Might be a U.S. thing because I mean, normally, say in London, for example, normally it's more like I'll just get her to meet me at the venue, you know. But then in London, people don't drive very much because it's you yeah. know that the, the, people. It's don't like drive New, it's like New York. Different. Everybody yeah, takes it, Ubers, it, it, taxis. It, it, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that might be more of a U.S. specific thing in certain cities or whatever. But um, yeah, I'm not sure what the best prescription would be for that. Then, do you think it's more dominant to just say? I think they're afraid. I think the women here are so skeptical of the guy. Not afraid of him like like he's going to put her in the desert in, a, in a, a hole. I think it's more like if he doesn't fit all their check marks, they want to be able to bail yeah. and not be yeah. trapped. Which is kind well, They of, certainly have a lot of options that men you, don't experience. You, you can yeah. kind of see their point, though, can't you, with that? Because like, who wants to really be on a fucking date with somebody for two hours if they're a simp or if they're so, a chump, you know? So yeah. my thing was I always went to... I, always, I was like, let's go grab coffee. Yeah. Because I didn't want to be stuck. 
Yeah. Right. I'm like, this woman, oh, no. I can't do it. Right. She's annoying me. I, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I, I this is funny. This dating coach was on Facebook. This gal from Seattle, where mm-hmm. I'm from, originally. Oh, she's cool. she, she's like, oh, I can't remember. I'll show you later. But mm-hmm. I, she's like, oh, coffee date's not a date. Like, no, I'm not taking you out to dinner until I pre-qualify your ass to make sure you're not a pain in my ass, right? Yeah. And she's like, that's not a date. It's not a date. It's a qualification phase. And she took it from the other way, meaning I'm qualifying you. You're not qualifying me. Why should I spend my time dating you? I have the options. You don't have to control this situation. Like a pain in the ass for this. Right, that's runner. my point. Because <laughs> she is a masculine woman, and this is my point. Mm-hmm. Men have to understand that we have control of the power wheel. This is what I call it: power yeah. and control. You are qualifying them. You're not going in hoping they like you. You got to go in the mindset that I'm seeing if you're gonna fit in my frame Mm -hmm. if you can qualify to be with me. We're grabbing coffee. Mm -hmm. That's the way you have... Because the man, I think what happens, we're we're like, oh, I hope she wants to date me. No, no, no. Does she qualify to date you? Yeah. Yeah. You got to think better yourself as a man. How do you you guys feel about uh, pre-selection? Because I think that can cut a lot of that out pretty quickly. Well, we got the king of pre-selection, Michael Sartain, coming in in later. Um, I mean, the way that he does it, from what I've seen, yeah, he, you know, he, when you're in Vegas and you're surrounded yeah. by like bikini-clad beauties, I mean, obviously that's gonna that's gonna have a huge. But effect. it doesn't have to just be that, no. right? No, it could be no. social circle game. It, does, we used it to definitely, call it, right? it definitely but, works. But, it definitely but, works. But I'll say this, and he, he he doesn't agree with me. This is not a place to date women. <laughs> I agree with you. I okay, agree. this is not a great place for a guy to be. I don't care if you can pull women here or not. I always say, don't date and look. Why, why, dating, why dating, is that? dating's okay. Dating's okay. Don't. Okay. Let me let me reframe this. Dating and relationships is two different things. Yeah. Okay. I see people we're in a relationship. I, it's not a relationship unless you're living together. That's a serious relationship, in my opinion. This is just me. So when you're in Vegas, you're like, yeah, oh, okay. Okay. So here, here's what you're, you're going with. I only when I when I dated, I was in LA dating girls. I was in Vegas. I was great, fine. There's none of those girls I would want to put a cuff on, ring, ring, yeah. bring them home to mama. They're problematic. Here's the yeah. point. I go to C markets. You know the passport bros? There's passport bros domestically. They're called C market cities, small towns, Tucson. There's tumbleweeds there. There's yeah. nothing there. My girl didn't even know what six figures meant. She was a six. She was cute. Now she's an eight. But but she didn't. She was raised to be a good wife. She was yeah. not tainted by. Let's go to let's go to Wet Republic. Let's go here. Let's go here. Well, modesty goes a long way when so you're looking point, for an LTR. So my point is yeah. this: Look, it's 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 not a flex to have ten girls on your podcast or at a pool party. That's still flex because those girls are meaningless to me. The point is, is that I would not take a guy that's ready to settle down. You're coming here. Every girl's Instagram, they've been to five countries in six months, and some guys paid for it. What would a settle down mean here? There is no set. That's my point. <laughs> Let me ask you this. You're, 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 I, I didn't realize you were 54. You're in great shape. You look fantastic. Well, almost for, 54. You know, damn, don't push damn, it, right? You know, but uh, you're, you're old enough to remember when, you know, because I'm over 60, but when um, I was younger in America and dating was going on, it was dating. We dated to do a couple things. We screened people we dated non-exclusively yes. even the women knew this we would date when we said we yeah. were dating it was all non-exclusive at that time and we kind of felt each other out in more ways than one right okay oh. and the cream rise to the top right literally literally and then at that point we decided if it was going to be exclusive and the yeah. purpose was at that time because we all kind of had this understanding we'd like to have families and children mm. and it was not that we had this big discussion about when or where. It was like, this is the process of becoming a does, mature yeah. adult right. in America. Right. I don't see that as anywhere even close today. It's just this strange... But but here in Vegas, You're wouldn't ex- this be kind of that old dating style? No, You're just here to have fun? Here's the thing. Everybody's everybody's connected to everybody. See, when we sure. were dating, we didn't know. Nobody was alpha widowed. Right. None of the girls were alpha widowed. They never... You, you got to understand here. I, you're with a girl. Let's go. Oh, I've already been to Tulum. Oh, I've already been to Playa del Carmen. Oh, I was already in Lambo. Great. You haven't been to my apartment. Exactly. Here's my point. <laughs> the point is, here's my point. Every girl you connect with, see, before it was your phone number. Yeah. Now it's let me get your Instagram. Yeah. No. It is, though. You it? say it that. You, even even No, when no, we, no. I know it is. Even when we is. meet, like I, I, met, I met some people uh, uh, from, from Miami that were in business. Yeah. They had all the Rolexes on, big diamond rings. And yeah, we're, talk, yeah. we're talking about watches. And they're like, let's exchange IGs. Here's the problem. In Vegas, 
I get a girl's IG. She's connected to 74 guys I already know. Yeah. It's like you. Sure. If we had a if we had a stamp on body count, I mean, I'm a man. You know, my body count was pretty high. I was single for a while. Yeah. But it's like, dude, hers is three times the size of mine. There's, mm -hmm. it's just, it's just like, hey, has this thing got a warranty? Does it really matter if she's not going to be your main? No, it doesn't. It doesn't when you're. That's my point. That's good point. <laughs> that's my point, Thor. It doesn't when you're dating. Yeah. Right. But when you when you when it comes time to buy, right. You don't want a rebuilt engine on a brand new Mercedes. No more buy. It's just lease option to own. Right, right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I've lived too long. Oh, oops, that's it's, okay. It's, that's le okay. it's lease worry. option to own. And by the way, there is a discount for miles. <laughs> but, but you see my point. And so for me, it was like, you know what? Been there, done it. Been there, done it. I need, I need the girl that's a little more pure. I'm not looking for a virgin. I wasn't. But I was looking for somebody. She's been with six men. She's in Tucson. She was married for a while. You know, whatever. Her mom raised her to be a good wife. You know, it's like she started competing. Yeah. It's like, great, because I, I, didn't, That's fantastic. I, I didn't want to have to go to Colombia. I didn't want to have to go to Mexico. So yeah. I brought the pas passport bros. Yeah. It was a passport girl bringing her here. There's she was already here. You know, so. There, there's nothing wrong with it. But that. again, if I was single, could I go out and date hot chicks here? Yeah, but, dude, I've been there, done that. It, I still the, don't. I still personally, I could be wrong because I haven't spent long enough here, but I still personally don't think it's my preferred place to, to date anyway. No. Even if you're just looking for, you know, for. No, for no, no, no. I would much rather, you know, we talk about. I'd much rather go to Colombia. I'd much rather go to Mexico. 100%. I, I think you know, I would agree Argentina. with you just because I, I do know immigrants from those areas and, and from the East. And there is a. The ones fresh off the boat, they're very interesting mm. in, in, in that some of them are quite but, conservative and different and, yeah. I think inter and very said, I think interesting. This, I think know? there's something to be said for going to the source. I mean, the thing about Miami. I, I would think so, too. The, I haven't been to the yeah, source. Yeah, I mean, the thing about Miami, for example, is you've got a lot of, like, Colombians, Venezuelans, Mexicans, whatever. Yeah. Like, they're cute. But if you like those kinds of girls, why not just go to the actual Very countries? feminine, right? You know what I mean? But, and, right. Because, and, because Miami's going to... Like, no disrespect, but Miami's going to do something to a woman if she's there for a period of time. And there's nothing wrong with with renting for a moment. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna rent this Lambo, right? But here's the, here's, okay. a, here's the problem. Watch this. Let's call it a test drive. Test drive. <laughs> yeah, take a test <laughs> drive, right? Renting. Yeah. The amount of issues and problems that you have just test driving here. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I'm going to test drive. I know she's a bad girl. She's slid on the pole, but I'm going to have fun with her for a moment. There's a lot of repercussions that come here. There can be, yeah. This place, you get. I'm like, dude, I just wanted to go on a date. Now I got people DMing me, and she said this about me. It's it's just drama. too much drama here. Yeah. Is it? Because even though it's a big city, is it's a relatively small. It's community it's a of, big of, small town. It's a B market, a B market that acts like LA, but it's not. B market's the population size. It's like you know 1.4 million in, in the oh, city limit. So, but but everybody's in a close area. You get 45 minutes in everywhere. Everybody knows everybody. Yeah. So 1.4 is 1.7. I'm, I'm guesstimating. It's, it's not massive, is it? And then obviously no. you've got all the tourists coming through. But stuff, it looks but. like. But on the front end, mm. it looks like LA. Yeah, and then you get here, right. and it's small town. Small. Mm. So it's like if you lived in some podunk town in Kansas, yeah. population of 600, you know all the girls. And I come in, it's like, oh, she's already been with Bobby, Timmy, Billy, you know, Stevie. Yeah. You know. So the key is just knowing that the girls worth knowing. Right. <laughs> but then when they get here, it's it's keeping them from not being tainted. Yeah. See, that's the problem. It's association. Yeah. It's lifestyle. It's who you associate. It's you, the five yeah. people around you you become. It's that influence. And that is a huge deal is influence. Females are very influenced. Males are too at this point. But the amount of influence is incredible. You know, I talk to guys that are in long-term relationships, and if they're in marriages and her wife's girlfriends are single or freshly single, it is a contagion, and it's very, very risky. That's but why it that actually bleeds over into single people. That's why I said married women don't have single friends. My girlfriend doesn't have no. single friends. And if yeah. she does have friends, you need to get to know them. I, but then, then it's like, oh, we really like him. No, 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 no. Not that get to know, but I'm joking. Well, but no, I'm there's not. nothing wrong with that. You need to bang our <laughs> right? You need to bang our friends, and but, then you're but, everything's but good. See, I, I, I did the setup. We live 25 minutes yeah, north. Yeah, yeah. She's focused. She's doing her brand. She's she's competing. She's in, yeah. she's in prep now. Yeah. So and I'm busy doing this. I'm yeah. running my company, and we're going, going, going. Yeah. It's like, hey, we're having a get together at Souk, and we're like, dude, we ain't got time for this. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But you know. If you have good couple friends that hold similar values, they don't have to have the same values. 
True. That's Facts. a good thing. But it's funny. We don't even have time. We're so busy. But you should. Well, you should do it. Glenn and a Coco. Yeah, that's great a people. Good, yeah, mm. Glenn's a good person. Well, man. I know about Glenn. Coco's great. Glenn, <laughs> no. the ne- I call him. Glenn, Glenn, Glenn is, is like, the red pill Jesus, but he's also the Neanderthal. So I got a nickname for him. Well, I call know, him. Ca- wait, you're gonna laugh. You know what his nickname is? Captain Caveman. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> Unga Bunga. He, he's my master at arms in the Drakars. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> he we definitely. Okay. He, he he's got a heart of gold. He is. But he he is loaded with. He is almost a spitting image of my oldest son. They're actually the same age. They're both creatives. Mm-hmm. One's an actor. One's a professional musician. So I'm very familiar with the Glenn type. So know? I call him yeah. Captain Caveman. Unga Bunga. It's We're gonna get him a shirt. It's fine. But no, he's very. So I've been to movie premieres with him. He's very socially aware. And having friends like that as couples, one hundred percent, it's it's a, it's actually a good thing. And for, we do. We, we, we went out to a, a, a thing with uh, the even crypto as event. a single person. I mean, he's a good. Oh person. yeah, 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 no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you need you need to set up a hub here, brother. Absolutely, man. No, I'd love to. And you know what the key? You know what the key is? You know what the key is? You know the key is is have a course when millionaires fly in January, uh, November. F1, all the billionaires from Monaco, millionaires come in. They don't have a problem meeting women because they have money, but they have a problem. They Their different problem is screening to see if it's just about the money. Yes. But if you have a coaching like class that comes in, a seminar where they can come in, and all of us are here, men of valor, mm. all of us are here in the space, and we're giving them tips. They fly in. They take a course in Vegas. When they're here for the weekend, maybe it's just for an hour, two hours, three hours, uh, and we're here, that could be something we could do. Because people, everybody, there's three million. How many visitors come in here a year? Quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, anyways, but well, yeah, bottom, no, that's a good idea. Is it November for the November's F1? One. Yeah, and the bottom line is, is they're men just like us. You know, in a lot of ways, they have a, you know, they have a presence about them. They've earned their way. One hundred percent. I mean, I would suspect a lot of them. I mean, there are probably some, but a lot of them are not trust fund babies. You know, mm. if they're going to sustain it, they're out 100%. there. One hundred percent. Yeah, so mm. they could be a good clientele and absolutely actually a resource. You know, but again, you know, like we were saying earlier, money is it's great. It's just a component, but it, it's it's not gonna. It's not in itself. It's not going to get you the kind of women you want to get. No, I don't. Think. Not sustainable. Not to say. I mean, you. Yeah, you're going to get some gold diggers. You might. You're going to get access. Yeah. To to hot women, but ultimately, they want. A guy who's got something, who's got that that thing, that indefinable quality. That I know what you're talking about. A dominant masculine. No, 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 no. You know what it's called? <laughs> it's Riz. called the Quan, Jerry. The Quan. Oh, oh, good D game? No, no, no. Quan. Remember the Quan? <laughs> the Quan. The Quan. Jerry Maguire. The Quan, Jerry. Oh, okay, okay. What's the Quan, Rod? Rod but, Tidwell. You got to watch Jerry Maguire. I'm not what I don't. Yeah, I'm not it's what you It's a sports game or yeah, sports yeah, yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. So. That's but why I started think, my first business because that you, movie. Do you no, think good, good. Um, that? Do you know rich guys who are kind of dorky, but they're just they're One, still getting hot women? I was uh, sure. yes, I was in Seattle. Okay, okay, it's a tech hub. Yeah, mm-hmm. every guy makes over hundred k. Which again, hundred k here, you're doing good. Seattle, you're not. But yeah, yeah. everybody makes six figures. They're making 180, 175, 200 yeah. with stock and all that sure. shit. And you see some of these guys show up, and I just saw it the other night. I said, the girl sat down next to me. I was taking a break from poker. I looked over. I'm like, okay, she's very attractive. And here comes her husband. I'm like, oh, my God. This guy. If I went, he'd fall over. But but just to play devil's advocate and be, bring a bit of Rollo Tomasi in here, there's an argument. She might marry that dude because he's Maybe got the bucks. money. He's got the stability, blah, 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 blah. But is, does she viscerally want to fuck that guy? You know, obviously not speaking about specifically that couple. No, but. no. And I'll tell you what. Yeah. This is my opinion. This is a fact, objective truth. They had 160 women look at, you know, the girls that say they want dad bods. 160 mm. women, they, oh, yeah. they asked them this question, and they said, who looks better? Like the magic mics, right? The yeah. point is, is that I like the dad bods. And we're not saying you don't love your husband, but who would you rather have sex with? They yeah. always go for the guy in shape, right? Mm. And so the problem is, is they might love the guy, and they're in love with him, and they, maybe she's having sex with him. But if a guy came along like magic mic that had his shit together, game frame, Money, mind, all that shit. They're gonna go. Wow, that's the guy. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. I'm not saying that they're not having sex. Oh yeah, no, of course, of course. No, no, but no. It's, it, it, it's like we want to be. I think a lot of guys who who watch this kind of content and they want to get good with women, they don't. What they what we all really want is visceral desire, isn't it? Really, it really is. we want the girl to be like, oh my god, 
I want to jump into bed with you. That's what we actually fucking want. But you'll, fi- you'll find that the females don't, they don't really want to admit it. They need plausible deniability. You'll, oh, you'll yeah, agree no, with that. They, yeah. they need plausible that. Plausible deniability. They act, it's a part of their dun, character dun. because of their social component, their of course, communitarian of course. nature. Yeah. You know, they need that. And, and so he's right, but you're right too. They need both of those components, you know, for mm. sure. But I think maybe at different points in their life, right? Maybe. You oh, know, oh, oh the, yeah. Rollo's got that. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. he's really onto something there because it yeah. definitely, I've noticed that too, been around a long time. Definitely uh, earlier on, there's a lot of different drivers there and, yeah. they, and they're affected socially differently as they age. And yeah, that's we we, sure. we got to end this short because John booked his back to back. Oh, he did. Okay. With somebody else coming no, in because we had to move calendars. But hey, look, I appreciate you guys back. We got to have you back in. Yeah. Make sure you go. To hit, we're, we're going to have the link to your uh, yep. Instagrams in there. Do you got a link to go get your book? Uh, I, I do. I'll have to give it to you afterwards. I'll put it in the uh, description put, box. Uh, my IG is is uh, rp.thor. Really get it. It's dominant masculine presence. It's learning how to cultivate your authentic self as a man and display extreme supreme confidence and control how over how you're perceived. So Right on. And that's really what it's about. It's the outside in. Yep. When you really conquer the outside... The inside takes care of itself. There you go. It really, really does. And follow Troy Francis as well. Thank At you for Real coming Troy out. Troy Francis, all social platforms. They're going to put their IGs up there. And yeah. thank you for following this podcast. Make sure you subscribe. Please hit the bell for notifications. They're not pushing the videos out. They are oppressing the videos or suppressing them or whatever. Matrix. Matrix. Yeah, sure. uh, follow, like, share this video. Stay strong. And remember, the truth will set you free. See you soon. Skull.